Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Father Adam. <laughs> I'm so happy to see so many of you here, some that I haven't seen in a while, and I'm very happy, overjoyed, that you have taken the time to be here on this Christmas morning as we celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the birth of a baby, the birth of a child. We heard today in our readings, a child is born for you. And so Christmas comes to us with one fundamental question. Do you want to have a baby? I'm asking you that question right now. Even you, Alice, at 80, <laughs> you're 80, Nine. 89, wow, and you're in great shape. <laughs> so that question is even for Alice at 89. Okay, and for Norma too. <laughs> Do you want to have a baby? I could have had one in March. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter whether you are 18 or 80. The question is the same today. Do you want to have a baby? For to you, the Bible says, today, today in the city of David, a child is born for you. Do you want to have a child? Now, I will never forget one of the saddest memories for me during my time in Mexico in the orphanage where I spent time in Oaxaca when I was living there in that orphanage a couple came crying with one plea we want a child give us a child they said we want a child for we had children for adoption there and so we gave them for adoption Victor, a five-year-old boy. And they took him home. But Victor, whose mother was a prostitute, was abused by the pimp, as well as some of her mom's clients. They even burned him, horrible things. And so just after 12 days, they brought Victor back. The couple brought him back and didn't even enter the orphanage, just left him at the door and say, we don't want this child. We want a child, but not this one. Take him back. <coughs> and they dropped Victor off. It wasn't the child they imagined. They didn't want Victor. In essence, they didn't want to love. For loving means accepting the trouble that comes with love. You see, we want the child, but we don't want the trouble. And when you don't want trouble, you don't want to love. And I'm not just talking here about the child that is like Victor, five years old. Because the very first marriage I celebrated for a couple, he was 22 years old and she was 21. After eight months, he had to have his appendix taken out and the anesthesiologist did not control well the oxygen to the brain and so he woke up from the surgery basically brain dead, a vegetable. And so after a while, the hospital gave them a settlement. She took half of the settlement and dropped him off at his mother's house and said, this is not what I signed up for, she said. You see, so many people come here to church and they want me to pray for them. And they say, pray for us because we can't have a baby. We want a baby. Others come saying what? 
Pray for me, Father Adam, because I don't have a man. I want a man. <laughs> you know that. You, you see it all the time. You know, I tell him all the time, take St. Anthony and turn him upside down. <laughs> I want a man, they say, or I want a woman, because uh, I, I want to have somebody. So whether it is the child that is five years old or whether it's the child that is your husband, because, you know, in many ways he's a child too. Uh, when you want a child, you want to love. But love requires trouble. Loving is troubling. Loving is messy. Love is messy. Love is problematic. Mary and Joseph received a gift today from heaven. The baby came, and the baby came how? With a lot of trouble. Huh? You think, it, you know, we, we go around singing, uh, we wish you a Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, and all of that. That first Christmas was nothing. Merry. Huh? The only thing merry about it was that the Savior was born. They had to flee. There was no Uber back then. No Lyft. Huh? There was no room at the inn. He was born in a stable, in a cave, in the midst of filth. Huh? And Herod was after him. You, I mean, there was trouble. But you know what? Living means having trouble. Hmm? Because living... The only way living makes sense is if you have love in your life. And to love, you've got to love somebody. You can't love something, you know. Lots of people love stuff. It doesn't bring you anything. You've got to love someone. What would your life be without the people in your life? And loving is trouble. I just spent seven days and seven nights in the hospital with my grandmother, who has been here visiting me for the past two months. It has been the best of times these past two months, but also the worst of times. In and out of emergency rooms, hospitals. Uh, I, you, you see the way I look right now, I'm not in my best, uh, obviously, because these past seven nights I have hard, hardly any sleep. I kept waking up like every half an hour to try to listen to see if she's breathing. Mm -hmm while sleeping there in the hospital room. You, you know, some of you, I'm sure you know, sleeping in the hospital room, they come check your blood pressure every hour. And I'm like, let her sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same blood pressure that it was an hour ago. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Loving is messy. Loving is trouble troubling, but I'm having the best Christmas ever, even though I, I spent the, the past seven days in the hospital because my grandmother is with me. Mm -hmm. And my Christmas is fulfilled and the best ever, not because of what is under the tree, but because of who is around my Christmas tree. That's why we have a tree right here. My grandmother is around my Christmas tree and all of you. Uh, that's why this is a Merry Christmas. Uh? Hmm? And your Christmas is a Merry Christmas not because of what you have, but because of who you have. We have a wonderful church. We're all a, a family here. And families are troubling, as you know. I mean, I won't have... Hmm? See, if you sign up to love, then you sign up for trouble. Hmm? Don't be like that couple that dropped Victor off after 12 days saying, we don't want this child. You see, to have God, everybody wants God. I mean, that's probably why you're here, I would venture to say. To have God... You need to have love in your life because God is love, the Bible says. And the way to have love is to have people in your life. And people mean trouble. You know that. I mean, come on, all of you are, that are married. Mm. <laughs> all of you that have kids, mm. siblings, 
But the only way to have God is to have people in our life because God is someone. That's why he became flesh today, incarnation. God is someone, not something, not floating around. God is a human being. To experience God, we have to experience one another. And that means it's going to be troubling. Jesus had 12 people with him that walked with him. It was not easy. No, we left him behind. And it ain't easy for you either. But it is a Merry Christmas because we are together. Hmm? Troubling times are loving times in our life. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us, incarnate in the people around us. Hmm? Are you expecting the baby to be trouble free? That's my question for all of you today. Hmm? No, the baby's here in the people in your life. And the baby's here with trouble. And that's fine. Hmm? I wouldn't trade this time with my grandmother for anything in the world. It has been the best of times. Of course, the worst of times, but the best of times. I wouldn't give it up for anything. Hmm? Most wonderful time ever. Hmm? The people in our life bring issues, bring problems, and bring all of that. Hmm? But what would we be without them? Hmm? I will, I'm particularly reminded of this story right now as I saw Matt coming into church with his uh, son, Lauren. Uh, and it reminds me of the dad and his little boy, kind of like them. Uh, and the daddy was washing the car. And the son, the little boy, like Lauren, was uh, helping him or I should say disrupting him <laughs> in washing the car, making a mess, making a total mess in washing the car. And the little boy turns to his daddy and says, Daddy, how did you ever manage to wash this car when I wasn't here? <laughs> how did you ever manage to wash this car when I wasn't here. Hmm? How did, in other words, how did you ever make it in this life without me? Hmm? How can we make it without the baby, in other words? We can't. Hmm? You can't make it without the babies in your life. Hmm? The little ones and the big ones. Uh, <laughs> can't make it we need one another God became a human being today and is continuing to become incarnate in the people around you and with that comes the trouble so today I say welcome the baby and welcome the trouble happy trouble to all of you <laughs> mm. happy trouble on this Christmas day mm? It's like that, huh? Because we're all together. Uh, I'm going to end with this because this, um, this just illustrates what Christmas is all about, what Christianity is all about, what our walk together is all about, what church is all about. In that orphanage, when they brought Victor back, I tried to console him. So I went out and I bought an ice cream, a big ice cream cone, and I brought it and I gave it to him. And I gave Victor his ice cream cone and I thought he was going to proceed to eat it or lick it. Huh? And he takes it and he runs into the room where all the kids are and he screams at the top of his lungs. We have ice cream! We have ice cream! We have ice cream! And each of the kids proceeded to come by Victor and take a lick of the ice cream. We've got ice cream. 
So to all of you today, I have some, particularly for Lauren, okay? I have something to tell you. We got donuts. <laughs> and I'm going to stand there at the end of Mass with my donut. And you can all come up and have a, not a lick. <laughs> I'm not going to say you can come up and lick my donut, but you can come up and, and bite. No, that doesn't sound correct. No, that does not sound good. <laughs> I mean, you can have a... <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> We've got donuts individually for everybody. But it's our attitude today as we celebrate together the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I've got free chalk for everybody today, not just free donuts. Free chalk, blessed chalk to mark your doors. I have free incense, and I have a calendar hmm? to place on the second most important part of your home. You know what the first most important part of your home is? The library, okay? <laughs> the second is your refrigerator. So I've got these calendars to place on your refrigerator to have a wonderful and blessed time with your family and a very, very Merry Christmas and a happy, blessed New Year 2023 in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 And the folks just coming in, welcome and have a seat. You came right on time. You made it in time for the Mass to count. When I was in the seminary, they said, Mass, Counts as long as you make it in time for the collection. 